Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, August 15th. We made it to the middle of August. It is here. We are inching closer and closer to football season, but we still got some baseball left. We will be going over today, uh, yesterday's slate, the perfect lineup and the winning lineups. And then we will go over pitching ownership for today, pitchers to consider, followed by some stack ownership and stacks to consider. Before we get into it, make sure to come join us at Lionstar. It is only $29.99 a month. It gets you access to all of our props, all of our uh, DFS stuff, the projections optimizer, all the tools for DFS, and then also, as I said, props AI. Uh, now let's get into the fun. We'll start with uh, good old perfect lineups here on DraftKings. So we uh, had a nice little slate yesterday. Max Scherzer was in the perfect lineup, had a great night. And then Grayson Rodriguez, who I was, you know, on pretty heavily, uh, had a really good night as well. And then Braves once again, Cardinals once again, Rays had a solid game. And then Bobby Witt is just continuing this absolutely crazy uh run that he's having where he's just crushing the ball so very very nice little perfect lineup and it actually used all the salary which you know is a little rare th these days or lately all right and then for the winning lineup shrek four two two four took it down one by you know a margin of five points a decent little win there and he had rodriguez and singer we did talk about both guys yesterday uh, Rodriguez had, you know, just a spectacular game. He was cheap in the 6K mark, had 6Ks, went uh, seven innings, you know, just a real nice game for him. And then stack-wise, we had Texas with a five-man stack and then one-offs for that. So Christian Walker, uh, Cabrian Hayes and Bobby Witt Jr. got it done for him. So real nice lineup. Really liked uh, the construction here. And way to go, Shrek. Congrats. Now let's get into the FanDuel lineup. And the FanDuel perfect lineup. No surprise at Scherzer. Then we have a little two-man stack for Texas. Oh, no. Oh, no, sorry. That's uh, Mariners there. So uh, two-man stack of the Braves. We got Bobby Witt showing up again here. Only one Texas player, which is surprising. And then uh, two Cardinals. So nice little lineup there. Almost used all the salary. And then the winning lineup yesterday went to Dan the Man, 8-1-3, with uh, Grayson Rodriguez, a... Two man Seattle or St. Louis stack, a Texas one off, KC one off, Baltimore one one off, Seattle one off, Arizona one off. But hey, he got it done. I uh, wouldn't recommend going this route, but you know he did it. Another thing is I did once again get onto the podium. I finished third. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get it done once again. Uh, Eugenio Suarez, at the end of the game, had uh, two runners on and was at bat, and he got this walk. Had that been, say, an RBI double, um, you know, I, I win. Or had he had an RBI single, then I'm at least in second. And uh, But... Regardless, I'm very happy to keep getting shots on goal, and I'm getting close, just, you know, not getting to uh, the top of the podium, but I'm uh, I'm very happy with getting this many shots on goal. My lineup construction, four-man Texas stack, two-man St. Louis, then with Suarez as my one-off. So, nice little lineup, and now let's get into the fun for today. And we'll get over to 
ownership here. Now, pitching today is pretty tough. Also, I need to go over a quick weather thing. Uh, there are storms around Boston and storms around New York, so make sure to pay attention to weather in these two spots. There is a chance of PPD today. Uh, we're not really going to know more for a little while, so just pay attention, and you're going to definitely need to check weather towards the end of, or, you know, right before the slate starts. All right, now pitching-wise, this is a very weird sl slate. There is some weird pricing and uh, I don't necessarily agree with all the ownership. So 11.6K for Zach Wheeler, and he's getting 35% of the ownership is very surprising to me. Lion Star doesn't really like it. 1.7X, 19 point, uh, point projection here. You know, Wheeler is a very good pitcher, but at that price and only having a 25.7% K rate, you know, I, I don't know if I can really do it. Um it's also versus Toronto, which is a fairly good lineup. You know, they do strike out a little bit. And lately, they haven't been very good, uh, you know, versus Wheeler. But I just don't know if I can follow that kind of price tag and uh, this kind of ownership on a spot that it's not like, you know, it's versus Oakland or Detroit or something like that. Uh, next, Bailey Ober, 10.2K, another spot where I just think he's very overpriced. At least he is against Detroit, who's striking out 25%, um, and in a pitcher-friendly park, but a FIP of five over the last five games, 46% fly balls. You know, he also doesn't have huge K upside, only a 23.9% K rate over his last 20. Combined K rate, 23.8% you know you're paying a lot of salary right there for not huge upside um so i struggle with wanting to go to bailey ober he hasn't been very good lately and really outside of a couple blow up games you know this salary isn't paying off for the season i am very surprised to see him being this high owned next nick pavetta uh again weather concerns here so we need to watch this game but if he is going to play and it looks like there is not going to be a delay then I do like Pavetta I think he's you know adequately priced at 7800 here he's had big time K upside lately 35% K rate uh 30% over the last five 3.33 FIP over his last 20 starts, 4.46 over the last five. You know, not a great last five, but he's been solid. So I probably am going to keep going back to him. The uh, Nationals don't strike out a ton, but they're not a very good offense. So I do like Pavetta, 24.6% K rate, uh, combined K rate today. You know, you're talking about a combined K rate very similar to Ober and Wheeler but 3K less, 3K or, you know, more or less, depending on which guy you're going with there. So I don't mind Pavetta. Next, we got Dakota Hudson. I think he's way too cheap at 5,800. While he's not a spectacular pitcher, you know, you can probably expect a very similar game as to what Mikolas had yesterday. You know, he's probably going to go six innings, uh, 4Ks, something like that, maybe gives up a couple runs, but he's only 5,800, so I think it is absolutely worth taking some chances on him, and then that'll allow you to pay up for some bats more, and there are some interesting bats today. Uh, Hudson isn't a great pitcher. He hasn't shown, you know, a ton of, a ton of upside, but Versus teams that strike out a lot, like Minnesota, he had 7Ks. Oakland strikes out 25% versus righties. He's much better at home. This is an interesting spot for Hudson. 21% uh, combined K rate at 5,800 is a little bit interesting here. Uh, David Peterson versus the Pirates. Pirates versus lefties are just terrible. 28.7% K rate. Uh, Peterson's much better at home. So mid low four FIP here, 23% K rate, combined K rate, 24%. I think Peterson is at least interesting. 
I don't love him. I don't think he's that great of a pitcher, but he's cheap enough to consider and has some upside on this slate. Uh, does he have enough upside to win you a tournament? I'm not sure. You know, if he had one of these 23 point games, which is a ceiling game for him, then, you know, that could probably get it done. But that's the issue with Peterson is you really need him to have a ceiling game. You say Kikuchi. I think Kikuchi is very interesting here. Uh, he's at home, 25.7% K rate versus lefties for the Phillies. The Phillies are a decent offense, but Kikuchi has been super good lately. 2.33 FIP over his last five. 25% K rate. The combined K rate is 24.3%. I think he is a very interesting pivot off Ober and cheaper. Um, I like him. I do have to say he is, you know, a bit inconsistent. But when he's on, he has real high highs. And so that is why I'm interested with Kikuchi. Uh, Jordan Montgomery, 11K for Montgomery is just insane. I would not be playing him on uh, on DraftKings. I think that price is insane. He doesn't have a high K rate. Combined K rate, 21% at 11K. No thank you. He is, you know, a mediocre pitcher and price insane. Emerson Hancock is cheap. I think you could consider him. Um, he had some strikeout upside in the minors, so maybe that shows up a little bit against KC. KC, however, has been hitting well recently, so just take that into consideration. Uh, Hancock, you know, also wasn't a great pitcher in the minors. There is just some strikeout upside, and that's really the only reason you're considering him there. Um, Bryce Elder, some real nice hitting weather in Atlanta, so I don't love this. Uh, Yankees do strike out a lot. He is better at home, but I'm probably not going there at his price. All right, Jack Flaherty, I got to bring up here. So no ownership is going there. So he is interesting. Now, I think there's a good chance the Padres have just given up. You know, I was watching the game yesterday. Didn't really seem like they were hustling. Uh, a lot of the players for that last series were saying that it's a do or die, and they lost the series. So mentally, they they could be checked out. Um, with that being said, I have prop bet uh, Jack Flaherty under 17 and a half outs already today. Um, because that's just what the data is going is telling me. Now, the emotional side and the DFS side is a little bit different when you're trying to play and develop these lineups. No ownership is going to Flaherty. Can he go over 17 and a half? Absolutely. Another thing is that his velocity has been up since he's with uh, Baltimore. You know, not a huge uptick, but you're talking about a mile per hour more or so, which definitely changes it. And he's in back-to-back -back games with 8Ks versus good offenses in Toronto and Houston. I think there is a chance that... Baltimore is telling him to throw a little bit harder, whereas maybe the Cardinals didn't want him to throw as hard. Um, regardless, it's interesting thing to follow. And if his K rate is going up from 23% to 26% because he's throwing a little harder, I think it's very interesting. And if he's facing a team that's given up, I don't mind going here. Now, San Diego is a very good offense. Grayson Rodriguez did shut them down yesterday. Um, so we'll see what happens today, but, uh, you know, I think Flaherty at his price is very interesting. Now, to get any of him, because he's only 1.7, you're going to have to kind of bump his projection up a little bit or give him a like, you know, something like that to kind of force him into the lineup. But I do think he's a little interesting on a game theory basis uh, because no ownership's going there. Uh, Bryce Jarvis we'll talk about a little bit. So this is a guy that... Did have like a 10K per nine uh, rate in the minors. He's getting the call up. He is going to be in Colorado. So rough, uh, rough spot there. But he's also a guy with like a low five ERA in the minors this year. So he does have K upside. He is super cheap, but he was not good at preventing runs. And now he's got to play in Colorado. So it might be a tough day for him. But at 4K, I think you got to at least put him 
uh, in consideration there. Um, outside of that, there's nobody really I'm looking at. I mean, you can always look at Giolito, but it's a real tough spot for him. I don't love it. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for us today on DraftKings. Let's check out FanDuel ownership here real quick. All right, so Wheeler, once again, highest at 10.8K. Uh, you know, he makes a little sense here. I don't mind him. I don't love it. I think this is a day that we can definitely get different at pitcher. Um, next, Jordan Montgomery. He is much more interesting here on FanDuel than on DraftKings, 9.8K. Uh, he's been a solid pitcher over his last 20 starts, 3.9 FIP, you know, not a t not a real high K upside, but he very well could and should go six innings as most of the time he does. The Angels strike out 26% versus lefties. They do hit lefties hard, but, you know, with that elevated K rate, there is at least a little bit of upside with Montgomery, and, you know, it's a game they're favored. They're at home. Don't mind him. Don't love him. Uh, David Peterson we went over. Don't mind him. He's cheap enough to consider. I just don't know if we're going to see a ceiling game, which you really need on uh, on FanDuel. You know, I, I don't expect him to be able to get, say, 8Ks and in five innings, so he really has to get to the six innings, have the quality start to score well, and that might be a tall task. Uh, Dakota Hudson is interesting at 6,400. I think he has a much high, higher likelihood than Peterson of going six innings. Uh, Flaherty, we covered him. I think he's interesting. Pavetta is very interesting at 8,500. You have to watch weather on Pavetta and on Peterson, though. Um, Ober, still too expensive for me on FanDuel. And outside of that, oh, Kikuchi. I got to bring up Kikuchi again. Look, he is a little overpriced on FanDuel, but literally nobody's going there. The game has a low game total. Kikuchi has been super good lately, so I think you can consider him in this spot. Now let's get into some uh, stacks. All right, so we have a Colorado game, so obviously they're going to get the ownership. The other game that should be getting the ownership is this Yankees and Braves game. Now, do they get it? We'll see. And, you know, when cards flip over at 4.05, we'll really get an idea there. So, all right. And there we go. All right, so highest owned team is the Diamondbacks. No surprise. Ty Block is, you know, whatever. He's not that great of a pitcher. Uh, it's in Colorado. I think it's almost 90 degrees in Colorado today. So, you know, good hitting weather. I would not be surprised whatsoever if the Diamondbacks did well. They'll absolutely be one of the teams that I'm considering stacking. Uh, Twins versus Faedo. Yeah, don't mind that whatsoever. Their uh, cheap stack can allow you to pay it for pitchers. And I think that's likely what's happening today is some of these cheaper stacks are going to get played a little bit more because people are paying up for pitcher. But I don't know if necessarily people should be paying up for pitcher. Uh, Diamondbacks, once again, Braves. I love this Brave stack, and I don't think they're getting the ownership that they probably should be this offense has just been absolutely crushing it and with lopes in the lineup it is making their stack much more affordable severino's been bad 7.14 fip over his last five 5.7 over his last 20 and really good hitting weather 10 plus mile an hour wins heading out to left center so i think it makes some sense going to them uh, on the flip side, I think you can go to the Yankees uh, versus Elder, who Elder's, you know, just okay. Um, I think you also can go and play the other side of Arizona and play Colorado. All right, highest owned or highest projected, 
no surprise here. We got the Braves all over, all over the place. Now, one thing that I would be looking for them is maybe two things, a little bit lower salary, a little bit lower in ownership. So then you can fit, you know, a solid team around it. Now, 59% on, <laughs> you know, five man stack is not very high owned whatsoever. So I think it's very interesting. And right here is a stack that I'd be very uh, interested in playing 25.1 K 59% owned. Very, very interesting. Same with here. Uh, so I think what you're going to want to do with the Braves is just play some of the guys in, you know, later in the lineup to get a little less ownership and a little more cost affordable. Uh, so Braves are interesting. Diamondbacks are interesting. Texas is interesting. Uh, Giolito just, you know, isn't that great lately? 7.58 FIP, uh, five over the last 20. So he also gives up some hard contact and Texas can definitely hit the ball hard. So I think they're very interesting. They put up 12 runs yesterday. They could definitely do that again. Um, now let's get up to the value. Uh, there we go. All right, so value stacks here. My computer is lagging a little bit today. Sorry, guys. Uh, we got White Sox versus Hendricks. You know, Hendricks isn't a great pitcher, but he does limit runs. So I have a hard time really ever picking on him. Um, I get it if you want to go there, though. They are cheap. They project decently. So it does make a little bit of sense here. Minnesota we talked about. We definitely like Minnesota. Uh, Yankees. Yankees, I think, are very interesting. Elder, 4.5 FIP over his last 20, 4.98 over his last five. We have really good hitting weather, and nobody's going there. So I think the Yankees are absolutely interesting today. Um, all right, now let's check out the ceiling here. Probably should have restarted my computer before doing this. Uh, ceiling, all Braves, all the time. Uh, Cubs are very interesting. Toussaint has been an okay pitcher so far, but I just think that that is going to fail sooner than later. Um, so the Cubs do make some sense here. Uh, there's a couple teams that I wanted to talk about that aren't coming up on this. So obviously we like Arizona, we like Atlanta. I think we got to like Colorado here. Um, I think they're in a very interesting spot. The pitcher, I don't even know who he is, but he hasn't been good. 5.63 FIP over his last five. FIP of five over his last 20. The bullpen isn't good in Arizona, so a lot of makes a lot of sense going there. St. Louis, once again, makes sense. That bullpen in Oakland is terrible. Boston, this is a weather concern game, but Josiah Gray is much worse at home. Uh, the bullpen behind him is bad, and Gray can give up some hard contact. Dodgers is the team I was thinking about when I said, you know, we weren't getting to them, uh, but we might want to. So solid implied total. Hauser's getting hit hard. The bullpen is, you know, fine. Um, but Hauser is just not that great. Allowing a lot of guys on base and allowing some hard contact. Dodgers are hitting pretty well right now, so I like them. Don't mind Seattle. Don't mind the Cubs. Don't mind Minnesota. Like Yankees. Like Texas. Um, yeah, so that'll kind of do it for us today. There's a lot of different ways you can go. My favorite stacks are Arizona, Atlanta, and Colorado. I like the Cardinals as a cheaper one. I like the Dodgers. I like the Yankees and Texas. So you guys have a good, good night. Don't be scared to get different on this slate. It's 13 games. We can definitely get a bit different on this slate, at least with pitching, if you're not going to get different with your stacks. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll be back tomorrow. Adios.